just going to take a very brief moment here and we want to offer you an analogy that will help you to be more clear about your point of attraction so envision yourself walking around with a bag of marbles and let's just for clarification let's understand that in that bag of marbles is every thought you've ever thought it's either a really big bag or they're really little marbles but you get the point <laughs> so everywhere you go when you walk into a segment when you walked into this room it was a new segment when the music changed and Esther hit the stage it's a new segment now Abraham's addressing you it's a new segment the telephone rings it's a new segment you get what we're talking about it's anytime your intentions change so when you walk into this segment this new segment you're actually walking into this field this field of attraction this environment where the law of attraction it's in every segment and it's in every place you go this law of attraction is responding to not your entire bag of marbles just what's active in your bag and what's active in your bag really is just what you believe your belief is a thought that you continue to think and if you continue to think it then it's active and if it's active then law of attraction is responding to it and law of attraction is matching you up with things that match what you've got going on isn't that a nice and quite easy way to understand what you've got going on so sometimes people say well can I just reach into that bag and pluck out the ones that aren't helping and just throw them off in the bushes and we say they'll be right back unless you're thinking a different thought so rather than thinking about throwing them off in the bushes or plucking them out of the bag just activate something that is better for you and how would you know what that is well there's a really easy way to know and that is whenever you know what you don't want you know what you do want and you've launched a rocket of desire we've been telling you for a long time that that rocket emanates and it is gathered up in this vibrational reality we've called it a vibrational reality we've called it a vibrational escrow your vibrational escrow we've called it the vortex it's this vibrational state of beingness where your inner being that part of you that you were before you came into this body the remain non physically focused some call it soul source so when you indicate a preference to something your inner being focuses on it with no resistance whatsoever and a strong gathering begins to happen but the question is are you one of the cooperative components that's gathered and often you are but more often you're not because you're so aware of what is what is has so much of your attention it's like you want to talk about what is and explain what is and gather together with other people who see what is the way you see what is and if what is is pleasing to you then give it all the attention and talk about it all the time and join groups that talk about it too but if what is isn't pleasing you if what is isn't enough of something that you want or need or if what is is something that you really don't want then as Jesus said and many other teachers have described it in similar ways with different words turn the other cheek give your attention to what you do want because what you've got your attention upon is what your point of attraction is really about and your point of attraction is being answered constantly and you'll hear this as we're moving through this day so we're eager to talk with you about anything that matters to you there is nothing that is off limits you're going to notice a really nice unfolding because this gathering happened before you dragged your physical selves here what you've been thinking about and wanting is understood and we'll have a really good day together as it is our primary intention to help you find ways of soothing any resistance you have to what you want no matter what it is whether it's something up close and personal to you like your physical body or your bank account or your lover or something bigger out there in the world like what's going on someplace else 
You get to look around and you get to choose what you want about anything that matters to you. And when it matters to you, it matters to source. When it matters to you, it matters to your inner being. We just want to show you how you've got to get on the vibrational wavelength with what matters to you, not with what is. Not with what is. Because what is keeps just being more of what is. Just keeps being more of what is. It can't change until you sift and sort and say, I'd like this difference. But when you say, I'd like this difference, you got to describe the difference. You've got to find a way of activating so much of that difference in your bag of marbles that your law of attraction is about that difference that you have chosen. And then the law of attraction will bring you through your path of least resistance more and more and more and more and more and more evidence of what you want. And as more and more and more of that evidence of what you want comes to you, as you manifest it into the see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it, then you know what happens? Then you'll start to believe it. We can't give you your belief because words don't teach. We can just tell you how it works. And you can practice how it works. And the law of attraction won't let you down. It will give you precisely what's active in your vibration all day, every day, you and everybody else. So what do you want to talk about? Hmm, some stuff. There's a lot of trouble in this room. Start right here. Thank you. I'm here and uh, it's been quite a journey uh, since I was introduced to your uh, way of thinking and way of being and I've worked past uh, all the emotional stages and um, not past them because those emotions help you all day every day don't work past them just understand what they mean when you have them I could try to control them don't give them up it's like the fuel gauge on your car you want to know when your tanks empty so back to um, a few months ago or uh, it was a while back um, I had a, I still have the business. I have a few businesses. One of them um, I've been involved in a very long time. And uh, it wasn't very profitable, but I was just keeping it open because I have so many people that work there. And There's a lot of just, reasons to do a lot of things. It's not work. always about money. Right. And that's Sometimes what you it's told about me. fun, co creating. Yeah. So I left it open. Left um, it open? Yeah, I, I, you told me to just close your eyes, think of what it would like, be like to close it, and it, I didn't want to close it, of course. So um, fast forward now. Um, it's you know, actually quite slow forward. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's opened, and it's actually, um, we're now transforming into a diagnostic center instead of a medical center. But... Um, I guess what I really wanted to tell you, thank you, and for that. And um, I am uh, finding it hard to, you know, I, I know who I am, and um, that's a hard thing to keep up with because you're changing every single day. Right, right, and and um, you're attracting now all these new different people because of who you're becoming. Because as of your bag of marbles. And because it's fun and because it's important for expansion to have change. So then, you know, the ego... Um, it's important because it's part of your focusing I mechanism. I call him my amigo, but sometimes he's not my amigo. Yeah. So, you know, the well, ego is always there. And um, what, just, Can you briefly define ego in the way you mean it? Yes. So, for instance, um, my wife, Shay, she's here with me. And... Um, I love her very much, and we've been on this journey together. And um, and then a lot of people in my life that have helped me push, you know, push everything forward. You're off the subject of the question. So the ego is when someone tells me something that is correct, but I, you know, I get really maybe defensive, or I'm just like, well, well maybe we just want to help you define this. You in your attitude of ego. Maybe holding a bag of marbles that completely matches your inner being's bag of marbles, which means you are on fire. And that makes other people say, mm, big ego over there. 
And we say alignment, empowerment, clarity, certainty, sureness. Sometimes when you've been sort of comparing and calibrating to other humans, you might be holding that bag of marbles that is ego and you might not be in calibration with your inner being. You might be wanting to prove yourself right against this or against this or against this. But let's not bash the ego because the ego is the focus. So let's say sometimes you're focused egotistically. Your selfish point of view is the only point of view you have. And sometimes you're in sync with your inner being and sometimes you're not. But let's call it aligned or not aligned rather than ego. Don't take your ability to focus out of your deliberate creative process. It matters. I agree. Helpful. Yes. <laughs> yes. So these people around you, have they been telling you that your ego is out of hand when they disagree with you? In other words, why did you bring them in to the conversation during our question about how do you define ego? What well, made no, you talk about them then? It's not, it's not them. It's actually me. I'm well, it always is. But why did you bring them up? <laughs> Because, um, because they're the people around me that I rely on to, to, uh, in conjunction with my own guidance system to know that I'm pushing everything towards the right direction. See, look at it this way. If you've been tending to your bag of marbles, we can talk in more detail if you want to about something happening and it affecting you, hand wringing is exaggerated. And then you deliberately find easy to find good feeling existing positive aspects about that subject so that you activate easy to find good feeling attributes aspects that are in alignment with what your inner being knows that's what you want to rely on all these people that everybody's relying on they may or they may not not may or may not they are cooperative components but are they cooperative components to this bag of marbles or to this bag of marbles and that's not up to you that's up to what they did before they showed up that's about what they've been thinking about that's about what part of the television they watch every night and so you can't control what somebody else's point of attraction is but if you will make sure that you are in sync with this powerful, powerful, highly positively influential part of you, then you don't say things like, I rely on them. Instead, you say, I rely on my alignment and my alignment produces a synergy between me and my inner being, which causes a gathering of cooperative components that's off the charts that hardly anybody can understand. I look magic, in fact. I look magic. Esther got a phone call this morning from the dry cleaners. <laughs> we found a piece of clothing and Esther said, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because it was something I really care about. Was it an undershirt and did it have little sparkly under threads in it? Yes, that's it. Esther said, thank you for calling me back. Thank you for calling me back. Now they were going to find it because they had it but they called her because she found existing matches in other words she didn't let herself stay in that not because she was trying to control the outcome of the missing garment but because she can't stand to feel like that that sucketh <laughs> <clears throat> yeah If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.